Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to explore something called the Laplace transform a little bit. And then we're going to look at a nice application of the Laplace transform to find the value of a fairly tricky integral. Okay, so let's dive into what I mean by a Laplace transform. So let's say we have a function, maybe it has to be piecewise continuous, and maybe it has to have sub exponential growth. Its domain is the non-negative real numbers and its range is the real number. So it's a real valued function. Then we define the Laplace transform of f of t to be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times f of t dt. So let's notice that this outputs a function of f. So this has the property that it transforms this function of t to a function of s. And I should say that really those variables don't matter so much. You could use other variables if you wanted to, but I think this is standard. So along the way, we'll calculate the Laplace transform of the cosine of a times t and the sine of a times t as well, like to do one of our examples. But maybe before we get started, I'd like to point out that my second channel, which is really my course video or learning channel called Math Major, has a full course on differential equations. And furthermore, we're working to grow the Patreon to a certain level that we can turn the ads off of all of the lecture videos on Math Major. So I'm really trying to remove any of the friction from learning from this learning-based channel, which is, like I said, my second channel. So if you have the ability to support and if you're interested, go check out our Patreon. And you get some other benefits as well that are outlined on that page. Okay, so our first order of business here will be to calculate the Laplace transform of cosine and sine. Let's introduce some notation. Let's set capital F of S to be the Laplace transform of the cosine of A of T. And we'll set capital G of S to be equal to the Laplace transform of the sine of a of t. And we're going to use this nice trick that calculates each of these Laplace transforms at the same time by kind of playing them off of each other. Okay, so let's start with f of s. So like I said, that's the Laplace transform of cosine a of t. That means it's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times cosine of a t dt. Okay, nice. So now we've got a transcendental function times another transcendental function. So an exponential times a trigonometric function. And this motivates us to use integration by parts. And I'll choose my u part to be this e to the minus st, and I'll choose my dv part to be this cosine of a t dt. So let's note that that means that du is equal to minus s e to the minus st. Remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to t here, and that means that v is equal to 1 over a times the sine of a times t, because the derivative of sine is cosine. Okay, so now let's apply the integration by parts formula. That should give us u times v, so that's going to be 1 over a e to the minus st times the sine of a t. We need to evaluate that at 0 and infinity. And then we have to subtract the integral v du. But we've got this minus sign built in, so that cancels the minus sign in the integration by parts formula. s and a are constants with respect to the integral. So I can write this as s times a, and then the integral from 0 to infinity of, let's see, e to the minus st times sine of a times t dt. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, I should point out that generally, we take our variable s to be bigger than zero here. And that's exactly what we'll do here. Otherwise, we would not have convergence. So now let's notice if we plug zero in for sine, we get zero because sine of zero is zero. And then if we let t trend to infinity, the exponential goes to zero because of our choice of s. So all in all, this entire term tends towards zero. But then if we look closely at the second term, we'll notice that this thing that I'm boxing in magenta is indeed just equal to the Laplace transform of the, the sine of a t. 
So we could maybe put all of this together to see that f of s is equal to s over a times g of s, given that we've used that notation for the Laplace transform of the sine of a of t. Okay, so here we have our first functional relationship between capital F function and capital S function. If you're looking to start your own domain, personal website, or online store, look no further than Squarespace. As a website myself, I can tell you that Squarespace is the best of the best. We mathematicians need to step up our website game. Too many math websites are stuck in the 1990s. Squarespace has tons of templates that offer awesome customization options with no coding required. Although you can access the code if you'd like. There's even an easy LaTeX integration that I have on my website. Whether you're already running an online store or have just begun your journey into web design, Squarespace has the tools you need to succeed. So what are you waiting for? Go check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for supporting this channel. Now let's find another one. So in this, so here we'll start with g of s. So that'll be the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus st, and then the sine of a times t dt. Good. And now we'll do the same sort of integration by parts argument. Here we'll take u to be the exponential, and we'll take dv to be the trigonometric part. That means du is exactly the same. We have minus s e to the minus st. Now v will be equal to, let's see, minus 1 over a times the cosine of a t because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay, so inputting this into the integration by parts formula, we have u times v, so that'll be minus 1 over a times e to the minus st times the cosine of a t. And then that's got to be evaluated from zero up to infinity. And then next up we'll have, let's see, minus the integral v du. There's a minus sign built into the integration by parts. There's two minus signs in our calculation. So all of those will give us a net negative. So that'll be minus s over a, and then the integral from zero to infinity of, let's see, e to the minus st cos a t d t. Okay, so that's looking good. And now let's notice that this term right here in our magenta is exactly our capital F of s by our kind of assumption up here. So that means we just need to take care of this thing that I will box in blue. So if we evaluate this at infinity, we'll get zero. Again, for the same sort of reason, because s is bigger than zero and we're taking a limit that's exponential decay. What about evaluating this at zero? Well, evaluating this at zero, cosine of zero is one, and then e to the zero is also one, giving us a negative one over a, but that's the lower bound of integration or evaluation, if you will. So that means in the end, we'd get the number one over a because it changes the sign. So let's see what we have. We have g of s is equal to one over a minus s over a times f of s. So let's maybe write that here. So like I said, we have g of s is equal to one over a minus s over a times f of s. Now let's put a nice box around that. Great. And now let's use these two functions to solve for f of s and g of s. So maybe the most obvious thing to do first would be to take this expression for f of s and input it here into this equation involving f of s. So let's see where that will leave us. We'll have g of s is equal to 1 over a minus s squared over a squared times g of s. But now let's solve for g. So we can move this to the other side of the equation, but we'll probably want to keep in mind that this is like a squared over a squared. So that'll end up giving us something like s squared plus a squared over a squared times 
g of s equals 1 over a. Okay. But now we can easily invert that to get g of s equals a over s squared plus a squared. And that would be like a nice final value for our g function. Recall our g function is the Laplace transform of sine of a times t. So we have this is a over s squared plus a squared. And then I'll let you guys work out the details for f of s, but it's not too hard to do. And what you'll see is that this is s over s squared plus a squared. Okay, so now that we have these formulas, let's apply them to calculate some interesting integrals quickly. Okay, so let's use our Laplace transform to start by calculating the following integral very quickly. So let's notice that this is exactly the Laplace transform of the sine of 3 times t, where we take an s and evaluated, at, evaluated it at 2. That just follows from this definition right here. So we know the Laplace transform from an arbitrary s is this term here. So let's see what we get. This is going to be, so let's see, the role of a is being played by 3. We have 3 over s squared plus 9 evaluated at s equals 2. That gives us 3 over 13. Okay, nice. Now I'd like to finish off with one more example, but we're going to need another formula for that. And it's not on the board right now, but it has to do with what happens when you take the derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of f of t. And here we're gonna play it a little bit fast and loose with some of our derivative rules and integration, but needless to say, with reasonable assumptions on the function f, we're good to go here. Okay, so let's notice that this is the derivative with respect to s of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times f of t dt. So something like that. Okay, but what happens when we take the derivative with respect to s of this? Notice a minus t jumps out because of the chain rule. So that's going to give us something like the integral from 0 to infinity of, of e to the minus st times negative t times f of t dt. And I've written it in that suggestive way because now it's simply the Laplace transform of a different function. It's that function that I'm putting this box around. So here we have this is the Laplace transform of negative t times f of t. Okay, nice. So let's maybe underline the extreme left and right hand side of this and then immediately apply it. So let's calculate the integral from 0 to infinity of t times e to the minus 2t times the sine of 3t dt. Okay, so let's notice there's no minus sign built into this. So that means we need to bring the minus sign to the other side of the equation. And this will give us minus the derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of the sine of a times t evaluated at s equals 2. Okay, so in other words, we have negative d by ds and then 3 over s squared plus 9 and then evaluate that whole thing at s equals 2. Okay, so now let's take that derivative keeping in mind that we can take this object and write it as 3 times s squared plus 9 to the negative 1 and then just apply the standard power rule. The minus 1 will come out. It'll cancel this minus 1 and we'll be left with something like 6s over s squared plus 9 quantity squared evaluated at s equals 2. So where'd the 6s come from you might ask? Well, the 6s comes from the chain rule. We've got to take the derivative of s squared, giving us 2s times 3. That's 6s. Okay, now we evaluate this at s equals 2, and we end up with 12 in the numerator, 6 times 2. And then in the denominator, we end up with 13 squared, which is 169. That would be our final answer for this integral. Okay, so like I said, if you're interested, go check out the second channel for a full course on Math Major. And if you want to help support the channel and help make it more efficient to learn over on this second channel, maybe check out the Patreon. And that's a good place to stop.